Starting with this question here, it reads, the equation above defines a circle in the xy plane. What are the coordinates of the center of the circle? So if you've studied circles so far, you'll remember that the formula is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where h comma k is going to be the center of the circle. And here it's asking for the center of the circle. But if you look at this equation, it doesn't follow this format. So we have to get this equation looking something like that. So how do we do that? For this question, we do something called completing the square. And all you need to know for the SAT is that you take the second term, which is b. So if you took a normal quadratic, be like x squared plus, oh, whoops, just regular x plus c. Yeah, this is going to be b, the second term, and the equation to get the completed square is going to be b over 2 squared. And what you're going to have to do is do that for each of the x terms, and the, eh, let's start this over again. Starting with, this yeah. Starting with this question here, it reads, the equation above defines a circle in the xy plane. What are the coordinates of the center of the circle? If you've studied circles for the SATs yet, you'll remember that the formula is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where h comma k is the center of the circle. This question is asking for the center of the circle. But if you look at the equation here, it's not in that format. So what do we do for this question? To do this, we need to do something called completing the square. So we'll rewrite our equation up here. x squared plus 20x plus y squared plus 16y equals 20. What we do here is we treat the x's separately and we treat the y's separately because we know that's what happens in the circu circle form. What we want to do is make this look like a quadratic and find what c term at the end, so the end of this and the end of this, would make it a perfect square. So it would be, you know, x plus something squared. And to do this, we need to know that the formula to complete the square is b over 2 squared. And b is the second term in the quadratic, so here would be the 20x, here would be the 16y. So to complete the square for the 20, or sorry, for the x's, you would do 20 over 2 squared, which would be 10 squared, which would be 100. And to do it for the y's, you would do 16 over 2 squared, which would be 8 squared, which would equal 64. So now we would rewrite our equation. We would get x squared plus 20x plus 100. For the x's, for the y's, we would get y squared plus 16y plus 64. And when completing the squares, you have to add these values to the right side as well to keep the equation balanced. Because if you're going to add them to the left side, you also have to add them to the right. So we'd have 20, I think that's a negative 20, plus 100, plus 64. But in this question, we're not really concerned about the radius, so we can just leave it like that. And then when we factor these, because we got the perfect square, we complete the square, we know it's going to be x plus 10 squared plus y plus 8 squared, and it's just going to be half of these. And we know h and k are going to be our points for the center of the circle, so we get negative 10 comma negative 8. So our answer is going to be b. So if you're comfortable with completing the square, you could have just looked at this question here and known that the left side was eventually going to factor down to x plus 10 squared plus y plus 8 squared, but you should be careful with doing that because sometimes it's going to ask for the radius and you need to go through the whole process of adding the values on the right. Now for an easier one with circles, this one is just straight up asking what is the equation of the circle gives us the center, gives us the radius. So again, remember the formula is x minus h squared 
plus y minus k squared equals r squared. The two things to remember here is that the h you want it to be negative. So if it's negative, it's going to be a positive h is the point. And if the k is negative, it's going to be a positive k. And you want to remember that it's r squared. Don't forget to square the r as well. So if we have 5 and 7, we want minus 5, not minus 7. So not that, not that. Whoops. All right. And we have to remember to square the radius. So it's 2. So that's going to be a. Now moving on to a different aspect of circles are the arcs. So starting off with a tougher one here, it says the length of arc ADC is 5 pi. So this is 5 pi. And x is 100. So this angle here is 100. And what is the arc length of ABC once this big one here? So for these, you just have to remember the formula is arc equals 2 pi r times the angle, and we use theta to represent the angle, over 360. And then we just plug in what we know, and we can solve for r. So the arc is 5 pi equals 2 pi r, we don't have r, times 100 over 360. And I'm going to start by canceling things. You know that's going to cancel with that. We know these zeros are going to cancel out. 2, and that'll make that an 18. We just want to make this as easy as possible for ourselves. So we'd be left with 5 equals r times 10 over 18. Then we'll divide both sides by 10 over 18. And we would get r equals 5 times 18 over 10. Cross that out, get a 2. And we get r equals 9. So now that we got r, we can use our equation again to find the arc length here. So now the arc is going to equal 2 pi 9 times, if this angle is 100, we know this one's going to be whatever adds up the whole circle of 360, so that's going to be 260, and that's going to be over 360. Again, zeros would cancel to arc equals 18 pi times 26 over 36. 18 is half 36, we cancel it out, we get two. And then we get arc equals pi times 26 over two. And arc equals 13 pi. And our answer is gonna be B. Now moving on to an easier one. This one says in the circle above, point A is the center and the length of arc BC is two-fifths of the circumference. So that's going to be two-fifths of the whole thing. What is the value of x? So here we just know this is two-fifths of the total. So we also know the angle is going to be two-fifths of the total, which is 360. So x is going to equal two-fifths times 360. So we would work this out. 2 times 360 is 720. 720 over 5, 720 divided by 5, we get 1, pull down the 2, we get 4, we get a 2, and 4. So we get 144 degrees. And that's everything you need to know about circles for the SAT.